we're upgrading a Will Help the Rock Cleaver deck for our real life friend, Dylan. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BC, joined by Amber, and that makes us the nitpicking nerds. All three of us work tirelessly and equally to bring you videos every single day, so if you would like to support all three of us equally, there's a Patreon where you can give us your direct money, and we appreciate it, like, a ton, like... Like, like, almost like we'd love you as much as we could without making you uncomfortable. Yes, and if you want to support us indirectly by buying Magic cards, use our TCG Player affiliate link in the description below. Go there, buy the Magic cards you were going to buy anyway, because you're a Magic player, you have money. If you have any disposable income, it will be spent on Magic. This is the nature of all Magic players. So when you use that disposable income, use it with our affiliate link and give us money so that this channel can be better. Yeah, the TCG Player affiliate money is what I use to give Amber food, so... Theoretically, if we get no TCG player affiliate money, Amber will die. That, that, and that would be extremely sad. You, like, can't, you can't be responsible for that. You want to be responsible for that? We're also sponsored by Moxfield.com. Uh, they also pay for Amber's food. So if, yep. so if they ever go away, Amber could also die. That's a lot of pressure on Amber. We, so go to Moxfield and so they know that we're sending you. Click on all of our stuff so that they know that they need to keep us. <laughs> Click every button. Every <laughs> button. And happy birthday to everyone whose birthday is today. We have a commander tune-up, which is when people send us decks via Patreon that we upgrade and then send back to them ten times better than before. However, this is a unique scenario, Cherries. Yes, uh, this is a birthday present for our friend Dylan, whose other friend, or our other friend Kyle got for him for his birthday. So, wow. what, a, what a gift. Happy birthday, Dylan. Uh, we care a lot about birthdays here, clearly. We care so much about birthdays, and we certainly didn't wait until a month after his birthday. Belated birthday. Yeah, belated birthday. So this is Commander Tune-Ups. Like you said, we take in the deck. We do all that. There's restrictions. They gave us the restrictions. $200 budget. Uh, it was originally 150 I asked to stretch it so I could put in a little package that every zombie deck should have in it. So I got to stretch it a little bit. And there's nothing else. Just make this a good, strong zombie deck that can function and do its thing. They said nine power, but I'm like, uh, if it's a nine power, it's going to be a boring deck where I add Vamp Tutor. So like, yeah, how about eight? It's like, okay, I can do eight. We can I, do an eight. I can do an eight. First thing we ought to do is read the commander. It's Will Help the Rock Cleaver, two black blue for a three three. When one of your zombies dies, if it doesn't have decayed, you go ahead and get a decayed two two zombie that attacks and then dies at the end of combat. And then at the end step, you can sacrifice a zombie to draw a card. Yeah. So this is the this was the start of the four mana do something within the archetype. Card draw. Card draw every single turn. Right so, alongside Lenore. Right alongside Lenore, and they've done a million of these since. But let's go over the best five cards that are already in this deck so you can see what we were working with. Obviously, in any zombie deck, Gravecrawler and Phyrexian Altar are always two of the best cards because they're just a two-card infinite combo every single time. Yeah, throw it a dice trigger, and great. You get uh, infinite of that dice trigger. And Wilhelm says, wow. Here's infinite 2 2 decayed zombies if you have nothing better to do. Yeah, exactly. It's so, it's very, very strong. I mean, the Gravecrawler itself is an individually strong card in this deck, and the Phyrexian Altar also just individually strong. Turns out one of the best sack outlets of all time. I mean, Phyrexian Altar in this deck is basically like Ashnod's Altar, but for colored mana because every zombie is worth two zombies. Yeah. They all leave a stupid zombie behind. That's true. You just get two colored mana, which is going to be black or blue, obviously. Noxious School is in this deck. This is a board wipe combined. This will Grave Crawler in any stack I'll let. Give all of your creatures, all your opponent's creatures, minus X, minus X, where what? X is the number of black mana you have? That's strong. Yes. Uh, Noxious School is like the Archfiend of Ifnir for zombies. If you let it live, every single turn, you're getting Plague Wind. Every single turn until you answer it. Yeah. It, it does demand an answer very much. Skull Clamp is in this deck. This is a sacrifice deck. It's a graveyard deck. Obviously, Skull Clamp is good. Do we want me to read you Skull Clamp? I won't. Because I don't you... think there's a deck with Gravecrawler and Phyrexian Altar that Skull Clamp is not in. No, probably not. I mean, it's especially because Gravecrawler just loves Skull Clamp. And so does Phyrexian Altar. Ugh, they both, yeah, they both they get they get along very, yeah, very well. It's like sack the creature. Here's the mana to equip to the next creature. <laughs> to sack it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Rooftop Storm, also another combo card. Works with Gravecrawler. Works with. A million things in this deck. I mean, obviously, Rooftop Storm. If you're we're playing like 30-plus zombies, they're all free to cast. That's going to be pretty good, believe it or not. Yeah, six mana, creature omniscience. I'd play that. It's also one of the most unique payoffs for a tribe. I absolutely love Rooftop Yeah, I love Storm. that they just went in for it like right away, too. They were just like, hey, zombies are a thing. Here's this card. All right, now it's time to go over the changes for the deck. One for one. We took out a card, and we put something in its place. Sometimes they don't have a direct replacement, but a lot of times they do, like... We start off here with some card draw. Village rights out. 
I've talked about not being a fan of this card over and over again. I think you need to mention it again. I, I need to mention again why I don't like Village Rights. I don't think people like get where we're coming from on Village Rights because this is one of the cards we get the most hate and flack for not liking. So it's one mana, sacrifice any creature. Okay, so you're going to have useless sacrifice things and draw two cards. I, the rate just doesn't even feel good to me. You have to make sure you have something to sacrifice. Yeah, this deck will have something to sacrifice most of the time. I don't know. It, it's tough for me to explain because I, I've played this card, I've seen this card, and it never feels like an actual good rate. Yeah, if you don't sacrifice something useless, this is basically Tormenting Voice, which nobody plays. Because if you sacrifice a real creature, it's like you discarded a card and drew two. And then you have to sacrifice a token or something, but then like, what deck are you playing? This deck, for example, wants to flood the board with as many zombies as possible. So it's like, okay, well, let me get some card draw. Well, it's not a zombie, so I'm just going to like totally take away a potential zombie slot to put in Village Rights. And this deck already had a card that we like way better, Plum the Forbidden. Plum the Forbidden's floor is two mana, draw a card, lose a life. Village Rights' floor is you can't cast it. Because Plum creature. the Forbidden's ceiling is, oh my god, they cast a board wipe. I'm going to draw eight cards. Village Rights' ceiling is... I'm gonna draw two cards. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, and I know that there's a one mana difference. I know this costs one mana. It just, it's never. I've played it. I've seen it. I've been on both sides of this card, and I've. It just doesn't play as. Maybe it reads good. Maybe it looks good. It never plays that well. You're really not getting away with much. But a card that we can put in instead, Kindred Discovery. Whenever a zombie enters or attacks, draw a card. We make two zombies per zombie. This card is like off the chain in this deck. Yeah, it's, it's so it's silly good. You're gonna draw so many cards. The fact of the matter is, the great thing about this card is that the turn you play it, you go to your attack phase. All right, I'll send in my three decayed zombies. They're useless anyway. They can't block. They're here to die. Get in, draw three fresh, fresh cards. If you have a sack, I'll like sacrifice any zombie. Get a new zombie. Draw a card. This card is literally it's over the top card draw for this deck yeah it lets you actually start looping gravecrawler and drawing your whole deck now it's not a may but the cards you will draw when you start going infinite with gravecrawler make it so that you're going to start stacking dice triggers faster than you can um draw yourself out yeah you're so not like and also kinder discovery what i like about it is it doesn't matter when you draw it if you draw it before your dudes play it and start playing your dudes and you draw but if you draw it after all your dudes just attack with them yeah, exactly. Uh, we also have we cut Deadly Dispute. It's another one. This card, I think, is... I, I like this card a lot more. When you have... Then Syner Village Rights. You need synergy with the, the treasure. This deck doesn't have the synergy with the treasure, so I'm off of it. We put in Liliana Sandberry. This is a zombie. Again, if you get bored with you can draw a bunch of cards. And what makes it perfect in this deck is that you get to set up how many creatures die. You sacrifice as many creatures as you want to draw as many cards as you want with this card. Yeah, but you also have control over how many decayed zombies you have at any given moment. And how many decayed zombies you want to attack with? Then you go like, all right, attack with all my decayed zombies. Four of them die. End step. Will health. Draw a card. Okay, now draw five more. It's super, it is super important that Liliana Standard Bearer is a zombie. Because I wouldn't play this card in this deck if it wasn't a zombie. Yes, it's a little conditional. Geese and Grolf, not a zombie. Probably why they got cut, even though they're a zombie payoff. They got cut for a non-zombie, though. Yeah, they got cut for Braids, Arisen, Nightmare. This is end step. Draw a card. Well, it's probably like end step, draw two cards, and then make a zombie, because whatever you sacrifice is a creature, and then gives you a decayed zombie. With Will Health, this card's really, really good. Whatever zombie you're going to sacrifice to Will Health, which you already had a plan, you get rid of it, it goes to the graveyard, you get a decayed zombie, sacrifice that to Braids. It's a useless decayed zombie. They have to sacrifice real, functional things in order to stop you from drawing. This card always draws a card every single turn, at least one, if not two, sometimes three. Yeah, I think Ethan, and Grolf and Braids are comparable, but I would... Try Braids. I think Braids is like such... It, the ceiling is so much higher. Grease and Groff is draw a card, basically draw one card a turn. Braids is draw up to three. And when they're not, and when you're not drawing cards, they're sacrificing real things. Yeah, they're losing some board state. Uh, we also got Buried Alive for Entomb. Mostly what we want in the graveyard is Gravecrawler. Entomb does it for cheaper. Buried Alive is like, it's a good card, but I never play it in like my highly tuned decks because it just ends up being different, better ways to to do that effect. Yeah, I, I, when you're tuned and you're not on a budget, I also feel like Buried Alive is a good, strong magic card. It's really good. You can just do it better. You can do it better when you're playing at higher powers. If you're turning through your deck faster and making sure your deck is functioning and all like synergistic, this card doesn't really have... It has three cards you want to put in the graveyard, but it's mostly just Gravecrawler. Like, so, well, the better your deck is, the less cards you need to Buried Alive. You with. only need to Buried Alive Gravecrawler. Right, That's like some of the other decks, it's like you only need to get Protein Hulk in your graveyard. Why do I need two more things? Exactly. So Entomb is just way, way better for this deck. And they're like comparable in price. Like, yeah. So if they're comparable in price, Entomb is the much better choice. All right. Get ready for some tutor swapping. Mausoleum Secrets is out. 
it's dependent on what's in your graveyard. Sadisi is more expensive, however, it is a zombie, and it just lets you tutor any card. It doesn't have to be black. It doesn't have to care about the creatures in your graveyard. Again, it's a zombie. It It's powering up every little tiny synergy in this deck to be a zombie, and we don't have to worry about anything. We just have to sacrifice a creature. We're Gee, I wonder if we're going to have creatures. We're going to have creatures, and now people are going to take this quote and go, but what about village rights? We're going to have creatures to sacrifice? Let's use village rights. No. Mm, What's no. better? It's Sadisi's a, a zombie. Sadisi's a zombie. And right? you're tutoring. Actually, yeah, village rights. Want to know something? It's kind of left in the deck. Felstinger is village rights on a zombie. When village rights is on a zombie, I'll take it. I'm, I'm a lot higher on it. Yes, because... I can sack it to Phyrexian Altar. I can skull like, clamp it. I can do things with it. Village rights being an instant for your permanent base deck. Good. Not ideal. Let's go to an offer you can't refuse, and let's cut it. A few counter spells were in this deck. We left a few in because you got to protect your combos and stuff, but we caught a few of them. You don't have to go too hard on them. We're going to add Ravenous Rotbelly. This is pretty brutal. It's like, I don't even know how to describe it. There's not a word for this. Each opponent sacrifices three creatures. Yeah, it's really, really strong. You sacrifice useless zombies, mostly decayed, and then they sacrifice Again, real creatures, because when you're forcing them to sacrifice, they're getting rid of real things while you're getting rid of your useless zombies that are making you more useless zombies. Oh, it's just chaff. The zombies keep coming, and they're all interchangeable. This is like the evocative flavor zombie deck. Yes. I also cut out Negate. That's a good budget card, but we, we're up in the budgets a little bit here. So we got Overcharged Amalgam. Again, it's a bad counter spell, but it's on a zombie. Do we need to, Do I need to point out how important it is that... You put... Like... The zombie deck with 50 zombies is probably better than the zombie deck with 30 zombies that is playing all of the negates and village rights. Yes, exactly. The overcharged amalgam also can stifle, which is you can get a real you get you can get a real gotcha. Get that World Gorger Dragon trigger if you know what I'm Ooh, talking about. Yeah, that, Kyle, beware. Yeah, get, yeah, literally just wreck Kyle with uh, the overcharged amalgam. Unearth, I don't know. Unearth's fine. It's near dear to my heart. Classic, not a creature in your creature deck. And Gravespawn Sovereign is absolutely absurd. The card is actually factually absurd. I'm and there this card just tap any five year zombies, useless or useful, get back your best zombie from the graveyard to the battlefield. The best thing from a graveyard to the battlefield. Yeah, and then just do it again and do it again. And then your board is just gonna be so ridiculous. This this card becomes a must answer. You don't even have to advance your board stay anymore because you're just gonna keep adding things to the battlefield. I mean it just gets really gross if you got like, you know, carrion feeder and grave crawler. All of a sudden, you, like, tap your five zombies. Now you can sack Gravecrawler. With will help, you get a Decayed. Play Gravecrawler. Now you have two untaps, and it's like, hold on, we're going to start building up more and just keep bringing things back. It's kind of nasty. Yeah, this the melody, this card's fine. Um, I'm, not high, I'm not super high. I'm not super low on it. I'm just kind of in the middle on it. I think when you have a not, like a non-zombie card draw thing. You want, like, Kindred Discovery where the ceiling is just unbelievable yeah. instead of, like, oh, it might not do much. Yeah, what does the board, instead of relying on what the board has right now. Yeah, it only cares about what the board looks like right now. And this next card is busted and has combos. It does, yeah. It's Rod Hulk. This card is silly good. It is $20, but it is super good. Dylan, if you don't, if you're if you're looking, you, know, you want to cut one of these twenty dollar cards. Don't make, it, don't let it be Rod Hulk. Rod Hulk is so good. Enters for each opponent you have. You get a zombie from your graveyard to the battlefield. Yikes, this card is so, so strong. I I mean, it's just literally triple reanimation in your deck on a creature, no life loss, no anything, just get back zombies. Oh, yeah, if only we had another Rod Hulk. Like, well, let's cut Jadar, Ghoul Caller of Nefalia, because he's not a zombie, make some zombies. We're not going to have trouble making decayed zombies, and we don't necessarily have full control over whether or not we have decayed zombies. We kind of want multiple, and I'm not really jazzed about one. So let's add Necro Duality. When a zombie enters, you make a copy of it. Uh-oh, Rot Hulk combo. Yeah, the Rot Hulk's going to trigger to make another copy of himself, along with his trigger to bring stuff back. Bring stuff back first. Sacrifice the Rot Hulk. Oh, it's in my graveyard. Necro Duality goes off. Makes new Rot Hulk. Whoop. Here we go. Rot Hulk enters. Hmm. Well, there's a trigger to make a new Rot Hulk with Necro Duality. I'll return whatever I can. Sacrifice the real Rot Hulk. Oh, fake Rot Hulk enters. And uh, I could actually play this on a loop because it actually works over and over and over again. And so you win with some... There's three different uh, zombies that drain when zombies die. Yeah, three it's of like, them. Well, there's Plague Belcher is one of them that was already in the deck. And then I think we added some more that are coming up. Diagraph Ghoul or Diagraph yeah. Captain. Yeah, Diagraph Captain was in there. And then I think we have one more. Yeah, we um, added the other one. Yeah, so Dylan, here's a brand new combo. Rot Hulk and Necro Duality with a Sack Outlet. You just sacrifice... 
the original Rod Hulk with the copy token trigger on the stack, and then the token will get back Rod Hulk, etc., which will then come back and make a new token. Infinite ETBs, infinite dies, infinite decay zombies. Yeah, you infinite. Then you're making copies of all the things you're bringing back, too. It's not True, just... It's basically like infinite everything. Infinite literally everything in your graveyard, which right. is kind of silly. You have to... If you can't win from there, that's poor deck building, and we did you a, di- a disservice. Right, and then when you're going off with all this stuff, you'll be super happy that you have more plague uh, stingers and, uh, like, kindred discoveries than distant melodies and village rights. Yeah. Back... Uh, a while ago when this card came out, Rise of the Dreadmire, and I was like, hey, this seems pretty good. I'm off it. Nope. Uh, I, I liked it, and I was wrong about it back then. Don't like it. Don't play it. I, I'm pretty low. I'm putting it in any deck. So in its place, I put in Zombie Apocalypse. So obviously good. It's so good. I mean, as you play the game, your graveyard builds and builds and builds, and all of a sudden you're like, all right, I win. Cause here's, here's everything I've ever done. Here's all the zombies I've played all game. They're all back on the battlefield. Beat that. And it's like, if you have... Like we said, the Diagraph Captains and the um, Plague Belchers. If you have those on the battlefield, the game's over. You're returning so much, you can just sacrifice all and win. And we have Carrion Feeders and Phyrexian Altars in our deck. Yes, so we're just going to win that way. This next card I absolutely don't like at all in Commander. It's Champion of the Parish. Vanilla stats. It's van- it's a vanilla stats that, if it doesn't come out early, stinks. And it's like, even if you make it a 2020, how many hoops do you jump through to get a 2020 that can be chump block? We, we have no way to push through damage. Yeah, like that. and also, we, even if we make it a 2020, we can't pay it off. For, we're we're going way. wide in second creatures. So yes. we're going to add Horde Wing Scab, which gives evasion. Funnily enough, how do we push through damage? Maybe in some universe you can push through champion damage with Horde Wing Scab. But we'll just play that good card instead and start to draw and discard. Yeah, exactly. This lets you like churn through your deck super fast. All your zombies hitting, just draw cards, discard cards. It's going to be super strong. Cut Tainted Adversary. Just don't think this is a good commander card. I, we can make a bunch of decayed zombies. They're not that useful to us. Not useless, but they're not that useful. So in its place, Undead War Chief, make our zombies all one cheaper and pump them plus two, plus one. Double the effectiveness of decayed zombies yes. on, on combat. Yes, it gets super, super high. I mean, two, like your two twos are four threes. That's a big difference. That's a huge difference. Blade Stitch Scab, it's coming out. I know that it's got some little stuff you can do. Bye. We're going to add Lord of the Undead, pump all our zombies some more, but if we lose a key zombie, like a carrion feeder or something, we can get it back. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the uh, the zombie lords all do a little bit more, except for Lord of the Accursed. Don't play that one. Yeah, but care- like, careful on this one. It pumps all zombies. It does. It doesn't matter. Just so you know. It doesn't matter a lot, but it does pump all zombies. So if someone else is playing Field of the Dead, you are pumping their Field of the so Dead. So if you're playing against me. Zombies. It is completely reasonable. I cut Zulaport Cutthroat. It's not a zombie. That's the only reason. It's a good card. In his place, Vengeful Dead, it's doing the same kind of effect, but it's a zombie, meaning it works with all of our little things like our Rod Hulks and our zombie apocalypses. This next cut was technically a combo piece, but I think this combo is janky and slow, and you have to untap with three decayed zombies, and everyone has to see it coming and not have it answered. It's Poppet Stitcher, which makes all your decayed zombies not have decayed, essentially. We don't, we're just not interested in that. It's fine. It's it's okay. With Will Helt, it lets you stack any zombie infinitely because you'll get a decayed zombie that doesn't have decayed, which Will Helt says, hey, this doesn't have decayed. I'm going to make another one. Yes, I just think the problem with this combo here is what are you doing with it? I mean, you have to, you can't get back around easily enough. Just you wait until I untap. Yes. No, you don't have to untap with Micaeus. This also has a ton of combos. This also combos with Rot Hulk. You can mm-hmm. do, there are combos you can do. There's just... A million little things Micaeus does, and you don't even have to actually combo because when you go Gary, sack Gary, but Gary comes back, even that is just over the top ridiculous. It's so much drain. This card is silly good. Yeah, Micaeus makes the game just not, it just makes the whole game trivial. You're going to win if Micaeus stays in play. We're going to cut Shambling Gas. It's like a cheap little zombie. It makes a treasure when it dies. No, it's but, better when it dies. Citrus Supplier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's Citrus. mill. Let's get the, 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 Graveyard churning. Let's get the grave crawlers and flashback cards in the graveyard. It's a zombie, which Samuel Guest also a zombie, but when it enters, it does something. It, it represents something. six milled cards. Six milled cards. Samuel Guest represents one token and maybe minus one, minus one is just not an effect that. Yeah, what are you hitting? Yeah, you're not playing. You're going to hit something sometimes. Like, it's never, it's not going to be dead, but it's still pretty bad. Well, all zombies are always dead. But da 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 da. What's next? Lazotep Reaver. We're saying goodbye. It's, it's two tokens. For one, and you can sack them both to make two more decades. That's not bad, but we're going to add Undead Butler, which can actually, you know, you're going to play it, you're going to sack it, you're going to get a decade. Then you're going to exile it from your graveyard, get back another zombie, which you can then play, sack, do whatever with, win the game. The world is your oyster. Plus it ETBs. ETB, mill three. Awesome. I love this card. It's so good. Yeah, it's super strong. It's a zombie. This is a perfect zombie deck card. 
mill yourself, and if you want to get back something you do, otherwise put it in your graveyard for later use. Mm -hmm. uh, we also cut Dread Horde Invasion, makes you a zombie every single turn. Not Lose a zombie? Life. Doesn't, no. like, represent a zombie? No. I think this other card represents more zombies. This card's really good. It's Empty lab Laboratory. It came in the pre-con for Wilhelm, and it's just, it's perfect. You just polymorph your zombies into zombies. As many zombies as you want. All the all the chaff uh, DK zombies you have, you built up. All right, I'll target all of them, and I will just flip and see what I hit. And You're, you're probably just going to win. You have so many. When you do this for, like, Five, six? Oh my god. Like you're you you're like you're just going and you if you hit like Micaeus, Rot Hulk, or Gary, or like Gravecrawler, like sometimes the game's just over. Yeah, but then that's one of the things that this deck um that was definitely changed from this deck that you've probably already noticed is that we cut a lot of the small do nothing zombies. Like, like your shambling guests. Shambling guests, Laz type reaver. These are they're low mana cost, low impact. They're very, very, very low impact. And we added in Big giant stuff like Machaeus that is going to actually like be able to win. Rod Hulk. These cards win the game as you get to the late game. You don't have to just rely on your combo because these cards are so strong and good that if you get them, you can actually win via just your creatures critical mass without comboing. Mm -hmm. We're gonna cut Rotten Reunion for a similar reason. I get the theme, although this does make decay, so you can't double up on them. And we're gonna add Liquid Metal Torque just for some extra ramp, just yeah. for a little bit extra ramp that has weird. 10% political value if you want to make something an artifact. Yeah, this deck had, uh, was missing like one, maybe two ramp spells, so I just added in Liquid Metal Torque for the extra little boof. boof. And now next, this deck had 32 lands, it, which it could have because it's, it's it was like 2.2. We're raising the curve a little bit. We're raising the curve. The curve's going up so that this deck can be more consistent and have a much better late game. Where the, This deck was strong at comboing, but it lacked in like staying in the game, playing into the late game, and like if this deck had 10 mana... It could only spend the mana on, like, seven different cards. Now it's got big giant spells to do. So we're going up to, like, 38 lands with MDFCs. So we I cut Viscerous here. It's just not a zombie. Great card. But we want our zombie count to be high. Added in Malachar Rebirth. It's just such a good MDFC. It's so strong. Rebuy a Rod Hulk and tell me it's bad. Uh, Razor Lash Transmograte, I think, is actually just bad. And we're going to cut it all the time. And we're going to add Agadim's Awakening, which is just amazing. And it's a late game bomb or it's a land. Oh, this card is so good. Like, I don't know how, how much we have to say about MDFCs, but I love this card. And Agadim's Awakening, I think, is the very best of the MDFCs, period. Yep. It's like a unique effect that you can get like in one other card. At and all. also it's a land. And also this card. And it can land. enter untapped. It this card's it, it's it's a over the top ridiculous card. You're a graveyard deck already. Obviously, we need this card. Cutting in Tuko Esk, it's fine, but three mana sack outlets just aren't that good, especially because they can't protect themselves. We're also never going to be able to hit with this thing. It's not like you attack within two quests. They go, no blocks. You're like, oh, Take God, 30. Take 30. And then never going to happen. We added in Seagate Restoration, another great MDFC. Yeah, we cut a few sack outs, but we already still have Carrion Feeder. Altar of Dementia is already in the deck. That card's amazing. And Phyrexian Altar. So if you're really, like, super mega worried, go ahead and put, like, Viscerous Seer back in. But I think we have enough sack outs. But I also think that this deck, um, the, the reason you don't need to have, like, seven or eight in this deck is because you have tutors as well. Mm -hmm. And your tutors represent whatever piece you need at the time. This is true. Uh, Bastard of Remembrance is gone. Another payoff for infinite ETVs and death triggers. But we get, we have that covered. Uh, we're going to add Hagra Mauling, and we're going to be able to destroy a creature every once in a while or play a land whenever we need it. I'm beginning to question whether our friend Dylan watched our channel at all. This deck had no MDFCs. I'm a little disgusted. It's I mean, no MDFCs? It just hurts, you know? You it's think you know somebody. Extremely painful. <sighs> we cut Unclaimed Territory... We've explained over and over again that we don't think that unclaimed territory or secluded courtyard, courtyard has any place in any deck ever. It, we're just not fans of them. Now, if you want to play Cavern of Souls, that card actually has functional text, and that's a great magic card. Off of that, in its place, Takanuma, Abandoned Mire. It mills you. It returns creatures. It's a land, so it's everything you need. We cut some lands. We cut five basic lands, three islands, two swamps, and we're going to add the following five cards that we're about to talk about. Two dual lands, Morphic Pool, and Underground River. Let's just make the mana easier. And you know what's better than Unclaimed ter Territory? Basically, any dual land. Yeah, exactly. Um, Morphic Pool is super, super, obviously, good coming in on Tath every time. It's the same thing with Underground River. These are just these are just a couple that we're missing from the deck. Uh, Morphic Pools isn't that expensive, and Underground River is really cheap compared to what it used to be. It was at least a $10 card. It's like, it's below five, so it's, it's really nice to get in the deck. High Market... Another land we added, we're getting some utility in our land slot. Having a sack outlet on a land, the fixing is great in this deck. We're not going to struggle, so high market's great. Demolition Field, if you're not going to put Strip Mine in your deck, I would say put Demolition Field in 
percent of the time. Not literally. Gotta have some way to deal with those BS lands, like Field of the Dead, which is also in the deck. Every single zombie deck needs Field of the Dead and a Field of the Dead package, because you literally just care about the creature type, and these zombies can still turn into decayed zombies. Yes, and if you want to take the budget back down to about 150, just cut the Field of the Dead, High Market, Demolition Field, Underground, and Morphic Pool, and Takanuma takes you right back down. Takes you right back down to 150. But the budget was 200, and we spent about 191. Damn, Damn we're, we're good. good. Uh, the original average mana value of the deck was 2.45. Now it's 2.88 because we added so many bangers that you didn't have. Yeah, exactly. Um, like I said, I think that it had a low curve, it was low to the ground, and it could function. But if the deck didn't combo, I didn't think this deck could win. Like if and you exile Gravecrawler, like if you pray, if you Praetor's Grasp Gravecrawler, this deck would be in some serious trouble. Yeah, before. it was. It was always like looking to do one of its combos. Now you have all the combos. You have the ability to go off that way. But the deck can just win through attacks now, through drains, and through just mass reanimation, and all of these things make the deck so much more resilient in your average game. Like when you sit down, now this deck. It can, it can, like I said, it can still do what it was doing before. And we didn't take anything away from the combo, but we added to its ability to play into the late game. Plus, gave you another combo. Yes. Take that, Dylan. Yeah, 30 changes total. And if you would like to see how we change other people's decks, the most previous tune up we did is right here. Give it some love. I think it was Dramoka. Could it's, be. But if it's not, it's another one. Peace out, Tribe Scouts.